Hey everybody, let's talk about how you handle errors in your C programs. Specifically today I want to look at patterns that you see come up when handling errors in C programs in Unix style operating systems like Linux or Mac OS. And let's start out with a program. It simply opens a file, reads its contents, and then writes those contents to standard out. If you're not sure what standard out is, please watch uh, my recent video on pipes. But this program is pretty simple. It works well as long as there are no errors. I can compile it and then run it with a file name and it'll print out the file. So no problems, right? But this program is also pretty fragile. It's not clear what's going to happen if I give it something it doesn't expect. For example, what happens if I don't pass it a file name? Silence. What if I pass a file name that doesn't exist? Hmm. Silence. What if I pass it a file name that's impossibly too long? Hmm. Once again, silence. Well, that's not very helpful. Someone using my program for the first time might not be comfortable with how it's supposed to be used, and I'm not really helping them very much. And that simply won't do, so let's add some code that actually handles some errors. Now, there are many different ways to handle errors, and the one that's right for your program is going to depend a lot on your program. It depends on what you actually want to have happen when a failure or an error occurs. But there are some common patterns that you see come up over and over again, and I want you to be aware of them. So the first is the usage check. Now, in its simplest case, this just checks to make sure that the program has the right number of arguments. You can, of course, get fancy with this and check and make sure that all the arguments are formatted properly and all that. And there are some tools to make those fancy usage checks easier to write, and maybe we'll get to those in a later video. But for now, let's just keep it simple. So with the usage check, you simply check to see if the input to the program seems reasonable. And if it doesn't, you print out an error message explaining to the user how the program is meant to be used. And now, if I run the program incorrectly, I get corrected. But that doesn't help me with the file name that doesn't exist. For that case, I could make my usage check more complicated and actually check to see if the file name exists. But this is going to get messy, and I think it's overkill, since open is going to fail if the file name doesn't exist, and that's literally the next thing my program does. So let's just check to see if open fails. And we know how open fails because we read its man page. Now, I've talked about man pages before in previous videos. They are so helpful and students often ignore them. But we're not going to, so let's look at Open's man page. The man page tells us how to call Open. It tells us what it does and what options it can take. And then down here, if we scroll down, it tells us what it returns and what errors can occur. Now, that sounds useful. And we notice two things. If there's an error, Open is going to return a negative one. It's not going to tell us what error right now. It just returns a negative one, which says, hey, this didn't work. And it's going to set error no to indicate the error. Now, this is a common pattern. It's not just open. Many, many system calls handle errors this way. For example, let's look at the man pages for read. Yep, and write. Yep, and fork. And, and you get what I'm saying. This is a pattern that recurs often. And I'm sure there are exceptions out there, but it's common enough that if you just happen to call a random syscall in Unix, Linux, or Mac OS, and it returns a negative one, chances are something went wrong. But so what's error no? It's just a global variable, and maybe if you're like me, it's a global variable that you feel like you're always pronouncing wrong. Is it error no? Is it error number? Is it error no? I don't know. It's a global variable to find an errorno.h that the system sets whenever a system call error occurs. And a system call can have a variety of errors, and errorno is how you figure out which one actually happened. So one warning, errorno is sent by a lot of different calls, so if you're not going to use it immediately after the call that failed, you need to save it in another variable. You've been warned. So let's go back to our program. And let's check to see if open returns negative one, and if it does, then let's print out errorno. Now you can see that the different error conditions are producing different error numbers, and that's cool and all. And then we can look up those names like eaccess back in the man page for a description, but we can also use the str error function to just get a short explanation. And now we're getting somewhere because my program doesn't really care why it failed, it just wants to let the user know so the user can fix it. So for this program, this is perfect. Now, if this was an error that my program could recover from, maybe it'll go off and search for files of the same name in other directories if it can't find the one you mentioned. And in that case, you're probably better off using the macros to find an errorno.h and that are mentioned in the man pages. But for errors that you don't plan to recover from, the standard approach is simply to print out a useful error message and then exit. And as the programs get more complicated, you'll see this pattern show up all over in your code. It's so common, in fact, that there's a function p error that allows us to shorten this. Still, I don't really like this either because my code that was, it's so easy to read at the start. And now it's still a lot messier, even when I use p error instead of fprintf. And so what can I do? Well, I've, 
I've seen a few different approaches. None of them are perfect. I'm gonna leave it up to your own creativity, what you think is best for you. One thing that you sometimes see people use is defining error handling macros or functions, which basically encapsulate this repetitive error checking. So let me just show you a quick example. Here's a macro. All it's gonna do, again, is gonna print out the error message if there was a failure. So it's gonna test to see if we're negative one. If we are, then it's going to print out the error message and then it's gonna exit. And just for good measure, I'm also gonna print out the file name and the line number on which the error occurred. Now, this is why I used a macro, not a function call. Maybe in a future video, we'll go more into depth into macros and their strengths and weaknesses, but normally I would use a function call because it provides type safety and a lot of nice other things. But this is one advantage of using a macro and so today I'm going to use it. And so now when my error occurs not only do I get an error message but it also prints out where in my code it occurred. So now my code is cleaned up a little bit. I mean there's this macro which might be a little unsightly but maybe it's not too bad. Maybe it's still pretty readable. We can still pretty much go through the code and see what's going on. And that's all I have for you today. I just wanted to take you through and help you think about how you handle errors in your programs. I wanted to make it clear what str error and p error were as well as error no, so that you can write programs that are more robust, that fail gracefully, and that actually tell your users what's going on when something goes wrong. So I hope that's helpful. Until next time, happy coding, and I will see you later.